Miss Gaddon, time to get up. Hey, how about bringing the volume down to foghorn level? Up yours, Count Druncula. Can you believe it's been 15 years? No, I can't. No, I can't. It goes by in a nanosecond. Do you know how you really know that time is... is when you see the kids in the family that you used to hold when they were born, and you are now at a gathering, and you're holding their children. Whew. My husband and I follow the Lakota Sioux tradition, the Native American traditions. We do uh, the sweat lodges, vision quests. Uh, my husband's a sun dancer. And these wonderful elders taught us so much. And this was Bearheart Williams, who was one of our elders, was coming into town Sunday night to do run a sweat lodge for us. And we go in there to pray. And the material that was even being shown to me to audition was garbage. And uh, I told Bearheart that I, 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 want, I think I'm going to retire. And he said, he's from Oklahoma, he said, Shelley, when you get into the sweat lodge, what I want you to do is to be very specific exactly what it is you want to do. So, got into the sweat lodge and I said, I'd like to be in a really good comedy, well written, that says something. Uh, Fifth Banana, and if at all possible, in front of uh, a live audience. That was Sunday night. Tuesday, my agent called me and said, they just sent, faxed me some material for the show that's already on the air. This is the last episode of the first season. Uh, would you read it? And so he faxed it to me and I looked at it and I said to my husband, Walter, I said, honey, help me learn this. I connected immediately to Rosario. Went out here, CBS Radford. Um, I was sitting in the waiting room, sitting there crocheting, and Max and David, uh, and Jim Burroughs came in and saw me sitting and crocheting and they thought, who's this weirdo? And went into the room, they were all sitting on the opposite end of the room. And I grabbed a chair and I dragged it over to where they were sitting and I said, is this gonna take long? I have to go home and cook a chicken. <laughs> Got back into the car, you had car phones then. And my agent called me, I said, how did it go? And he said, you start tomorrow. And I found out later they had read quite a few actresses. But there was something about Rosario. Uh, she reminded me a lot of my mother. Straightforward, solid, honest, and hysterically funny. Did the first show. It was so brilliantly written. I think Adam Barr was the one who wrote that episode, although they all contributed. And it was the last show of the first season. And every, the crew, the crew was the one that kept coming over to me and saying, you're going to be back, you're going to be back. So on the night that we filmed it in front of the live audience and after it was over, um, I can't remember now who was the head of NBC. I can't remember, it was Scott Sasso. They, they kept changing. And he announced that the show was picked up. They didn't say anything about me, but the show was picked up. And... I think it was a few weeks later, they called me and they said, you're coming back. Yay. It was lightning in a bottle and we all had each other's back. It, it was, I knew I would be back. I knew that I would be used as seasoning. I wouldn't have the A and B story. I would work between it and it was perfect. And the people we got to work with, oh my God. Everybody, everybody in Hollywood wanted to be on that show, every star because it said something. Because it said something at a time when, God bless Ellen DeGeneres, she opened it up. She cracked it open and took all the heat. But um, just recently, Vice President Biden and President Obama both have said in different ways that um, certain films and TV shows help to uh, further social justice. And Obama said films like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and TV shows like Will and Grace. It said something. We had bomb threats. LA Police Department uh, guarding every possible entrance and exit. We'd get these weirdos who would come on tape night or just and put their hands on our head and say, you're gonna rot in hell for doing a show like this, you know. But my husband and I, this is in the early 80s when people didn't even know what AIDS was. We worked with a lot of people and with the medicine men and 
uh, many people who had AIDS. We worked with their families. Um, we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. And thank God, we, okay, uh, Sean would tell me about the letters that he would get when we were doing Will and Grace. And Megan would tell me, we would all share the letters we would get from teenagers that would say, thank you for saving my life. Or now I can really talk, I can sit down and talk with my parents or so many, To use what you've been taught to use as a creative person and align yourself with all these other creative people and make people laugh and at the same time make them want to move forward. Come out of the dark ages and you, do, you can do so much more with humor. That's why they'll show these shows, they can show them in perpetuity and they would still be meaningful. And people watch them again and again and again. There's a rhythm to it. And they feel like they're part of the movement. And it, until the movement, you won't even have to think about it.